Hey folks, welcome back to Honey Money SG. And in today's video, let's talk about why I stopped using the UOB1 Visa credit card. You know, I have speak a lot about UOB1 credit card in the past. I even did a full review of it because it has the highest cashback in town up to 5% or even 10%, which is really unheard of in the Singapore credit card market. But you know, recently there has been some major updates and changes with the UOB1 credit card. And I think you should know about it because it will change your decision on whether you should use the UOB1 credit card. Let's address the elephant in the room. There is definitely a nerf in the spending tier, especially the 2000 spending tier. From July 2022 onwards on your statement month, the effective cashback of 5% will be reduced to 3.33% cashback. You know, previously, if we spent a consecutive three months of $2,000, we could get up to 5% cashback with our UOB1 card, right? But now it's all going to change because it will be aligned with the $500 and the $1,000 spending tier and every one of them will be 3.33%, no more 5% cashback. That is actually quite a big nerf, right? I mean, if we compare it to previously, we could get up to $300 per quarter if effective cashback but now with the nerf from 5% to 3.33% we are only getting $200 of cashback per quarter but at least there's one good news coming out of it right the additional cashback merchants for the $2,000 spent here will be upgraded from 5% to 6.67% that is only for the $2,000 spending tier for the $500 and $1,000 spending tier, no change. The additional cashback will still be 5%. Only the $2,000 spending tier, then your additional cashback will be 6.67%. I mean, even with all these nerves, there are still some people who would use the card because their consumption spending per month easily exceed $2,000 for a family. But for myself, I think it's not suitable for me anymore. Previously, I used the UOB1 credit card really for Shopee for grab merchants because Shopee is really more of an online marketplace and it's really convenient, easy and the discounts are really quite good. But in recent times, I think Shopee has really cut back all the discounts and promo codes and also we are not working from home anymore. So the demand for shopping on e-commerce is really going down because we are not at home to receive the parcels and we don't have so much time to scroll through our phones to look for those deals. And maybe for grab because you are working from office now, you don't really have to spend it on grab food, grab delivery, all that stuff. That makes it more convenient for you so my grab spending is reduced by quite a bit as so so there's really a lifestyle change right previously the work from home environment really gives rise to a lot of e-commerce merchants and also all these delivery merchants that has a boom in their business also let's talk about another inconvenience of uob1 that is you have to meticulously track your spending month by month because you have to hit the consecutive quarters to be eligible for the cashback i mean if you miss the spending by 10 cents or one transaction missing from the five eligible transactions, your whole cashback for the entire quarter is forfeited, which is a pretty big risk. And you know, times have become more busy when we go back to office. We don't really have much time to track how much are we spending on this card? What are the nitty gritty details? And because I'm also still working full time with a YouTube side hustle, there's really not much time to go into so much details on hitting the minimum spend as well as tracking which merchants are eligible or not. And I'm sure that's pretty much some of your experience experience which is why i always talk about if you need to spend so much effort to gain that cashback is it really worth your time and effort doing that also let's talk about the impact on third-party payment merchants like cut up and i pay my i previously introduced both of them to you one of it is to pay taxes and to get some cashback over it right but now with the reduced cashback cap from 5% to 3.33%, is it really worth that much effort? I think if you are previously spending on the $500 and $1,000 spent here, it's not much of an impact because nothing has really changed much for you. But if you are paying like a high ticket item like your mortgage over $1,000 to hit your $2,000 spent here, right? Now that your cashback has been reduced from 5% to 3.33%, that's going to materially impact how much cashback you will get from using services like Cutup and iPayMy. So that's just a calculation calculation you have to make for yourself whether is it worth it for your effort to continue using card up and ipmi with the uob1 credit card because if we take 3.33 percent less of the two percent transaction fees the effective cashback is only 1.3 percent which is really quite low for
for the effort that you have to do, right? Unless you can think of any other better ways to pay your merchants that do not accept credit cards, then I think it's still worth it for a little bit of effort. Get some cashback over 1%, I think that's still fine. Especially if your spend amount is rather high. But you know, another good news is that UOB has added Simply Go as an additional cashback merchant, which means that you can get up to additional 5% to 6.67% if you use your UOB1 credit card to go and tap on the public transport rights in Singapore. But anyway, UOB1 should not be your first choice for using Simply Go, right? Because I always talk about using Revolut if they continue with the 20% cashback promo for your public transportation rights by fulfilling the terms and conditions. Of course, if you want to look at which card am I using now, I actually detailed out in this video over here because I could just use one single card to do all my transactions, whether online or contactless at a physical merchant. With that, thank you for watching. My name is Christopher. This is Honey Money SG, steering young adults to financial independence.